If you watched my last video on tips and tricks for videography, now here's a live demonstration looking straight down and then inverted. So I'll just go ahead and invert that picture and now you're looking at it from my perspective. So this is the DIY Auto-Tune stimulator and adapter and some other little neat things. Uh, and DIY Auto-Tune is basically Mega Squirt. Mega Squirt equals DIY Auto-Tune. So we're gonna do an unboxing here. 12 volt adapter for the stimulator. It's a simulator board for Mega Squirt. So they kind of combine simulator and gym stim and now I think they just call it a stimulator. And this is the USB adapter cable that I need to hook it up to my computer. Computer door. Oh, it looks like it comes with a driver included. That's really neat. I like the packaging. That's really cool. Good stuff. Thought I had some stickers in there. I got a Mega Squirt sticker there and a DIY Auto Tune sticker there. Because when I first got the unit, I mean, it's completely bare. There's there's no markings, no labels on here, so I think that will that will work just nicely. And then I was also thinking that this one actually would fit quite nicely as well. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think I should do. I guess we'll try and see if this puppy will work. Now I'm gonna try and run uh, fraps to see if I can do a screen capture. So I'll be right back. I need to set up my laptop in order to do screen captures so that uh, I can do some overlays and you can see what I'm doing here versus what I'm doing on the laptop. So that will be a new aspect of my videography and one that you can expect to see more of in the future as we do Megasquirt stuff. Now the stock Megasquirt 2 comes with a DB9 cable. The end of this cable will not plug into my computer. This is only for older style serial connections on older computers Windows XP kind most laptops today have USB only so that's why I have to get this USB adapter so you don't even need the the DB9 cable I mean I guess if you really wanted to you could use this as a really long extension cable so that you have the extension from the DB9 and then this additional length to run God, I don't know probably run 10 feet <laughs> if you really needed to from from the car if it's installed in the car to a laptop on a bench kind of thing since these are sitting right next to each other this is going to go in a box and we are just going to deal with this and this comes with a 9 volt battery connection if you want to use a, a 9 volt battery to power it uh, according to the website, the 9 volt battery will only power this stimulator board for about 15 minutes. And if you're going to be doing tuning for the first time and checking your inputs, you're probably going to need more than 15 minutes. So it's probably a good idea to go ahead and buy the adapter that they approve of this particular adapter, milliamps and voltage. That way you don't try and go and get the wrong one that might not have the correct milliamps because I believe this one is about 500 milliamps, 12 volts, 500 milliamps. Uh, and they used to sell 300 milliamps, but I think they've gone up to 500 with the new versions. Recommend getting the correct adapter from DIY Autotune for this board. I'll just plug this in on my bench and before you connect anything make sure you read the directions msextra.com slash manual slash stim and that's going to give you a, uh, a nice little procedure guide it says plug the stimulator into your mega squirt and this does not come with screws plug it in by hand make sure it's snug okay I'm happy with that Okay, step two is to connect your computer to the Mega Squirt via the USB cable. I didn't get any pop-ups about automatic install for the, the hardware. Okay, now it says to go ahead and power on the stem board. Make sure I install these. I think that should have probably been first on the list of things to do. USB 2.0 to RS-232. Okay, let's go install this. That thing still seems cool. My computer takes forever. Okay, so let's go to Device Manager. Right click on Computer and go to Manage. Go to Device Manager. And I'm not seeing anything jump out. Other devices. I'm not seeing any connection. Oh, good lord, my USB wasn't plugged in. So it's installing the software, apparently now. USB serial converter. Ports common LPT. Update driver software. Let's try this again. Just a couple differences because the tutorial I think was written in Windows 8 and I have Windows 7, so there's gonna be some minor differences. The device drivers have installed and now I'm going to go to device manager right click on 
the serial port, which is COM16. I don't know why it raised it up so high, but we want the bits per second to 115200. Data bits 8, parity none, stop bits 1. Um, stop bits, I believe, is your latency. No, that's not the latency. Uh, flow control none, and click OK. God, I want to change my COM port, though. That's pretty high. Okay, so just remember that it's on COM16. And then we'll come down here to USB serial converter at the bottom, hit properties, advanced load VCP, make sure that's checked. And there's an uninstall guide if you ever want to do that. Uh, so I think we're good, our drivers are good. I just need to remember that I'm on COM16. I don't know if COM16 is going to be too high. Some programs use COM1, 2, or 3 specifically, so if that's the case, I'm going to have to figure out a way to change COM16 to, say, COM1, 2, or 3. But we'll find out if, uh, if that's going to be required. Okay, so let's try this again. Open Tuner Studio, create new project, some cool name, click on Detect, COM3, BOD 9600. See, there we go, COM16, BOD 15200. It should. Okay. Drive search complete. Controller found. One. Accept. Does not have a configuration to support the firmware found. MS2 Extra 2.0. Okay, so I suppose that it's using MS2 Extra. So I guess I'll click OK. Yes. Let's see if we can download that. Uh, that seems like that went okay. Driver, make sure my COM port, my baud rate is good. Test is successful. I have good connection. I have good communication. Let's hit next. Uh, select default dashboard. I'll just go with the default. Next. Offline, not connected. Um, not synced. And I have no idea what does what. But I think I'm in. Um, obviously, oh, well, they're labeled. Never mind. RPM, O2, TPS, IAT. So let's see if we can tune up the RPM. It would be engine speed. No, nope. oh, what was that? Got a little blank there for a second. Okay, let's try the O2. Um, getting nothing off of the O2 TPS. I don't even see a gauge for the TPS. What is that? IAT. Well, that works. Yeah, here's the coolant temperature. Okay, well that makes a hell of a lot more sense. I was messing with the IAT. Duh. I'll get it one little bit at a time. Okay, so I have coolant temp. That seems to be working okay. File. Uh, save tune as. And I'll save this as. Uh, okay, and that's going to be our original config, I guess. So that's that. So now I have a, an original tune file and project file for the probe so that I can always go back and see the original file of what perhaps may have been done and uh, it looks like I'm, I'm set up for mega squirt okay now the problem with the version 2.21 of the mega stim is that on the RPM you're supposed to have it set at the PNP not the NPN so that's this little left I don't know if you can see that there's a switch right here you want that in the left position and the tune that was actually set up that came with my board is set up for wideband so there's a little switch here narrow band NB WB wideband so I switched it over to wideband in order to control it but the problem is it's not going to control it if the if the engine is not running and I had no idea that these little guys these lights should be lighting up sequentially that shows that the engine is running and they're not doing that every time I turn this the most I can get out of it is like this little blip 
like right there. So this one lit up and then it was going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But that's it. That's all the, it's just like this little tiny little blip of a sequence. At the same time, there's a little blip on the tack. And some of the other gauges will respond for just a portion of a second. Down there, it'll go green, but I can't get a tack signal. This is the oxygen sensor, and the oxygen sensor is non-responsive as well. And that's this one. Turn that all day. The oxygen sensor does not move. And that's because the engine's not running. So in order to simulate the engine running, what I figured out was I'm going to be using this with a 36 to 1 tooth setup. 36 to 1 trigger wheel. Unfortunately, the stimulator board does not accept a 36 to 1 trigger wheel. It only accepts three possible inputs. Basic setup, tack input ignition settings, and here are your different options. There's only three that you can use. EDIS, basic trigger, or fuel only. So I decided, okay, well, let's try EDIS, since I know that works with the 626. But I really don't think that matters just for the purpose of trying to get these gauges to work. So I'll set that to EDIS, and anything in red, uh, you click burn, and that writes it to the, the memory on there, and close. Then after that, you have to basically reboot it. And the way that you reboot it is you just take the power out, put the power back in, and now that we are on the EDIS trigger wheel, when I move this, that's what it should look like. So now we have our tack. And you can play with that. As long as the engine's running, you can get an O2 reading and you can mess with your O2. So I wanted to test out this uh, vacuum. So I've got a uh, vacuum gun and I'm just going to stick that on there. I'm not going to adapt it or anything. I'm just going to hold it with my hand. That should be good enough. So take a look at this fuel load right here. Pretty neat, huh? So I've got my engine RPM, my O2 sensor, uh, throttle position sensor. In order to uh, get that to work, you have to change one of these gauges. So I'll just go up here, right click on the gauge, go to gauge template, go down to throttle position. Now I have my throttle position, TPS. I'll move that. Now my TPS value. So so far, I've tested all of the uh, the different potentiometers anyway, and have gotten a response from everything on my board. So to me, that says I've got a good board capable of providing ignition and measuring wideband O2 sensor, providing throttle position or idle air temperature and coolant temperature sensor. So far, so good. So this is a Mega Squirt 2 version 3.0 board with a Mega Stim version 2.21 and uh, saying I'm good to go.